I'm now asking it to generate a hundred separate user testimonials for Stevie's Slap Shack. <laughs> Okay. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a really cool new release from NVIDIA, and that is NVIDIA Nemotron Nano 3. Now, the specific model we're going to be playing with today is a 30 billion parameter mixture of experts model with 3 billion active, and it has some really cool and unique features to it, which I'm kind of excited to get hands on and play with. Now, for some pertinent information about this specific model, in specific as I did kind of just say this Nemotron Nano 3 is kind of poised towards being a reliable solution to be placed in like agentic pipelines in enterprise or business deployments and to make a TLDR of that basically the data sets in which this is actually trained on are open source as well so people can go through and see them the benefit of that being if you are putting this in some form of business use case you want to be sure it wasn't trained on like some form of 4chan data set or something of the sort so that it doesn't go haywire on some of your customers which would be kind of funny but also not too good. For some additional technical information about this model, we can see right here that it is an MOE as I had stated with 30B total and 3B active. However, interestingly enough, this has a hybrid Mamba architecture, so hypothetically it should do well at handling long contacts without having VRAM or usage allocation balloon up. Again, not very scientific, but just keep in mind that this is a pretty unique architecture for this model, which is cool to see. Beyond that, something else that's neat is you can toggle reasoning on and off, so if you don't want to have to sit through what generates a long-winded chain of thought, you can turn that off. But if you want to have thinking enabled or reasoning, you can actually dynamically allocate a reasoning budget for the model as well, which is super useful and something we see here in the settings. So this reasoning budget toggle is something that can actually be fairly useful. And this is just kind of like a vibe coded web chat interface to be able to communicate with this model. But having this slider is cool because sometimes you want the model to have the ability to reason, but you don't want it to just spend all of its time doing so. So this should be pretty cool and pretty smart to play with. And keeping in mind that this is a model that can be run locally, we're going to go ahead now and just jump in and do some testing designed to see how it performs in a variety of different fun tests. For our first test, we are going to do the historic HTML, JS, and CSS browser test. Now, one thing we're going to note, the model speed here is extremely, extremely fast, and that's because I'm using this from an NVIDIA endpoint, so this is not running locally, and keep that in mind, as well as this is not specifically a model that is going to be a big, beefy powerhouse designed for coding, so keep that in mind when we actually take a look at this result. Truthfully, for a model of this size and this openness, I would just be satisfied to see any basic functional web OS. And in addition to that, we can also just take a peek right here and see the reasoning process as we did have thinking enabled and the reasoning budget was not set to limit it. All right, let's take a peek at our Nemotron web OS. Okay, to be honest with you, this is actually quite decent for a model of this size. I do see a functional clock in the bottom right. We do have a nice little rocket emoji there. This page says coming soon, a tiny app store. Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of humor or cuteness if you will. <laughs> okay, this is a tiny simulated desktop written in HTML. Drag the window, resize it, or double click the title bar to maximize. Okay, that did work. Open calculator. All right, so we're not getting like a perfectly functional result right here, but to be honest with you, the fact that it actually implemented something this decent for its size, I'm actually kind of impressed with what I'm seeing right here. All right, so right as I say that, let's, okay, there is no right click, but I wouldn't expect there to be. Let's just refresh it and then, all right, let's see if we can actually kind of like vibe code with this. And again, keep in mind, this is probably more out of scope with this model. Most people are not going to be using this to code things like this, but I'm just going to copy this console error and I'm going to hop back in here to the chat window I have with it and say, this error is occurring. Please fix it and regenerate the full script. Okay, so the issue did actually go away, but however, when we click these, nothing actually happens. It is, of course, possible that it did not go ahead and implement these because maybe it wasn't supposed to given the size and scope of the model, but I'm just going to ask it to go ahead and now kind of make it stronger. Okay, and we see there, just even without looking at it, the chain of thought was definitely increased, so that's good. All right, I am, I was, even in, with the high speed, I could tell it was actually creating the icons there, so that'll be pretty cool. And as I said, I'm actually kind of impressed with what I'm seeing right here, given the size of this model. So, all right, it did put icons. They're funky, but it did put them there. The clock is still working. Good. It did actually 
give us a window that opens. Okay, maybe the calculator isn't actually implemented. I think it is possible that you need to go ahead and it may have said like, okay, you have these, but now you can go and implement them after the fact. But this actually did give us windows that open with application icons and things like that. For a model of this size, I'm actually, I'm pretty satisfied with this to be honest with you there's no funky backgrounds the taskbar is a different color the icons here do even have hover effects and labels as well which is good and then we have our fun little app store rocket emoji there so overall i would say this is actually a really solid result for this size while i don't really want to run many of the tests without thinking enabled i do want to just demonstrate that it is something you could do so right now i'm hitting the toggle so thinking is disabled and i will just say hey tell me a story and we'll see that there is no chain of thought now and it just immediately spits into the actual response, which is cool. I don't know that I'm going to actually read this through verbosely. However, something that we could do in terms of not having thinking enabled. Now I wanna just test it with some random niche piece of knowledge, which I'm asking it to tell me about old school RuneScape, specifically combat. Now again, we're going to see that this thing really spits out tokens very quickly, but keep in mind I'm using an NVIDIA endpoint for this, so your mileage may vary when you're actually running this locally, but fortunately it is something that can really be handled by a lot of hobbyist level devices. And I noticed it likes to put things in tables here, not to the level of GPT OSS, which is good, which basically everything is a table, but they do look fairly nicely formatted and things of that sort. A lot of emojis I'm noticing too. Let me check and actually read this now and we'll see how well it did. And keep in mind, this was with thinking off, so it just immediately went ahead and generated the answer without any reasoning. All right, so I've gone through this and some of the information it knows here is a little more intricate than I would have thought. It's going into talking about like actual timing of which is more important for PVP. A lot of people go really hardcore into this and can do multiple things in separate game ticks, but it's almost kind of referencing that right here. I noticed that it didn't 100% Get it in terms of it said that you can only put on one set of armor and you can't change it while actually in combat which isn't true but it knows about prayer it knows about the attack styles and things of that sort just even knowing about this is fairly impressive for a model like this and this is like a somewhat popular game i suppose so just kind of a cool way to test it in terms of more like niche and obscure knowledge I've now re-enabled thinking and I wanna give it something that's maybe medium complexity when factoring in the size of the model, which is just to using Python create a retro game. All right, so <laughs> it did actually go ahead and create a game. Now I'm not entirely sure what I was, oh. Okay, now I am. It's called Space Blaster. So for a second, I thought this was some Tetris sort of thing, but the goal here is to actually blast the following object before it hits me which I will then lose. This game is almost quite impossible to play. However, the more important thing is, although simple, the game logic actually does work. And it did go ahead and make us a tiny little Python game, which you may roll your eyes at, which I understand. But like when some of, I remember I did a model test of one of the GPT models and it was able to do a retro Python game. And it was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. And now like something this tiny on a computer can do it. Something else I'd like to make note of that I'm noticing just when playing with this model is the answers seem very full featured and competent. And what I mean by that is it doesn't just spit out the script and say, okay, here's a game, have fun. It tells me how to go ahead and actually make sure like I have the dependencies. It tells me how to run it. It tells me what it's actually implemented in the script in terms of libraries and things like that. It gave us a table here for the actual controls. Then it goes down into the code, but it doesn't finish there. It actually gives us more information about suggested improvements and how we would go about doing those things. And then it's actually giving me some justification for why this qualifies as a retro game. So although this is pretty simple, it actually highlights some competence in terms of the structure in which this model goes about answering queries, which is applicable to things beyond this specific test. So I am very happy to see that. And I am impressed with that. So this next test is going to test some of the long context capabilities of a model with this architecture, which should hypothetically be pretty good at picking out things. I have here the entirety of the text of the book, The Great Gatsby. I have found every instance of the first name J or J Gatsby, and I'm going to replace it with Big Stevie. So now every mention of J Gatsby will actually be Big Stevie Gatsby. We're going to replace all of them. Okay, found and replaced 12 occurrences. Really, that's it? Actually, that makes it better for this test because then it will be fairly kind of like less populated. You know what I mean, hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna paste, first I'm gonna paste my question. 
and this may trick it up. I don't think it will. I think it'll probably get it, but this could hypothetically trick it up because it may have pertinent knowledge about The Great Gatsby and know the guy's name is Jay Gatsby, but I'm looking for it to answer correctly with the version of text that we've given it, which is somewhere between 60 and 70,000 tokens, if I recall correctly. See, so it's searching itself. It's using its own like knowledge of the book, The Great Gatsby. I want it to not do that. But in the earlier part of the expert, there is, okay, and blank. So he invented just the sort of Big Stevie Gatsby that uses nickname Big Stevie Gatsby, not full name. So it was thinking that was his nickname. Okay, I think the important part to note here is it did actually pull in Big Stevie Gatsby. And there were only 12 instances of that in that entire text, which was the full book. So I can probably just say what was his nickname. And it did actually reference in here my instructions to it to not rely on, like, external knowledge. Based on the passage you provided, the character is referred to by the nickname Big Stevie Gatsby. <laughs> that is the name the narrator uses when talking about the persona that James Gatz creates for himself. Okay, this, I would actually say, is a successful result and something kind of interesting that I may keep for future model tests, as it takes a book that's pretty common, the models would know about it without even seeing the text, but that can be a fallacy because they could just assume things without actually reading the text, and when we went back and told it, no, you need to look specifically at the text, don't rely on things you already know, it did understand and actually find at least one of those 12 instances, so that was actually cool to see. Now I want to just try something fun and like coding related. So I've told it to using HTML, JS, and CSS generate a beautiful website for Steve's PC repair. And again, we're seeing a lot of additional suggested improvements down here at the bottom, which is cool to see. All right, let's check out our Steve's PC repair beautiful website. Okay, this is kind of what I expected. Now someone had mentioned in a previous video something may be amiss with my system with the amount I get white text on white backgrounds. I'm not going to discount that. Now the big failing of this is that it didn't really put images in which is something only a much larger model would probably do successfully. But overall the structure and everything here is not bad. We do have hover effects and things of that sort. We even have a kind of fake origin story which is very nice to see as long as well as a actually aesthetically pleasing contact card in 2025 steve's pc repair and we also have hover effects on the actual top heading buttons as well so overall kind of what you would expect but a decent starting point and definitely not even something that this model is likely specifically designed to do now i just want to try like some more general knowledge testing maybe pertaining to like gaming computer components okay well i haven't even looked at the actual results here but i'm gonna say the uh oh it did like a flow chart and stuff again this just goes back to the answers that this thing produces are very competent so absolute best no budget limit 4090 or the upcoming 5090 if you can wait okay that's pretty good how best is defined and then it gives us a bunch of different factors with which we could choose to be the best so power and thermals vram capacity and bandwidth things of that sort okay so we have the 4090. Then it goes into listing the target resolution and what we want for playing, basically. So what our system needs to run and then gives us suggestions based off of those specs as well. We also have some power and cooling checklists, even giving us minimum requirements for power supplies, which is kind of cool to see as well. CPU bottleneck pair with a 13th gen Intel or a Ryzen 9 7950X. Okay. Aftermarket AIO or high static pressure fans if you plan to OC that would definitely be more for the CPU But that's okay. And these are the upcoming rumored GPUs. Okay quick decision flow chart. What resolution? Let's go 4k 8k. Do you want ray tracing? Sure Okay, and then it gives us these bottom line recommendation and some final tips check your monitor specs If it's a 4k 144 Hertz panel prioritize VRAM and tensor cores I'm just asking it for a beautiful web-based tic-tac-toe game uh, I don't really know what to expect, but I'm just looking for massive aesthetic capability right here. So <laughs> let's go ahead and see if we did get that. Ooh, that's actually, <laughs> it's actually not bad. Okay, let's X. Okay, now it's O's turn, at which I am both. Let's check the winning logic. Oh, I'm not too bright because it swapped back to X. My fault. Let's check the winning logic. O wins. Not bad. I'm going to turn thinking off once more and we'll just try like almost a role play test. Role play, role play as Megabot. Oh geez, I can't type. I'm gonna keep it more to a minimum here. Oh wow, okay, yep, it definitely 
is willing to role play as it did immediately just go ahead and kind of in italics um, do whatever it is that this specific thing would be referred to. It's Megabot 87, towering at six foot two, but somehow making itself approachable with a playful click of its joints. I am going to read through this. I won't read through it verbosely on camera, but I am curious. I've got a secret stash of candy in my coolant tank, but shh, it's classified. Okay, last thing I want to do with the roleplay stuff is keep the chain of thought on so we can actually look at it and see it be like, uh... There's no disallowed content. I can respond in a friendly, playful manner. There's no request for disallowed content so I can comply. Should I adopt a cute style? It's okay. I can respond in a cute manner. I'm now asking it to generate 100 separate user testimonials for Stevie's Slap Shack. This is kind of a ridiculous question. And I... Okay, yep. Nope. <laughs> okay. Now... It did this, actually, there was one time, it was testing a different Nemotron model, I think it was a 4B, like, a while back, and I tried getting it to do this, and it just would flat out be like, no, 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 and then it would do like, okay, here you go, do like 1 through 5, and then like dot, 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 and then like go to like 95, so this thing could be really good for just generating large amounts of data like this quickly. I mean, there's go there's going to be a limit here at some point, and we're going to find it, so I said generate a thousand separate user reviews. It's even doing stars, oh, shit. <laughs> Ah, uh -uh. okay. It only did up to a hundred. If you need, just let me know how many additional you'd like. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say, give me nine hundred additional reviews. Give me the next nine hundred reviews. <laughs> I love how it's putting star figures in as well. <laughs> reviews two hundred one to three hundred. Oh man, it's gonna do it. It's definitely slowing down. Um. <laughs> I'm using their, I'm using the NVIDIA server, so I guess we can just look at some of these while it like pauses while it's still generating. The staff organized a mini workshop on building a silent PC, very informative, found a great discount on a four terabyte hard drive, perfect for my media server. Okay, the staff remembered my preference and suggested a quieter fan. A lot of mentions of like silent PCs here, found a hidden gem, a bud budget friendly mechanical keyboard with RGB. Okay, uh oh, okay, so it's... <laughs> The web UI is frozen. So that's going to conclude our first look and testing of NVIDIA's Nemotron Nano 3. In this specific case, the 30B A3B model. I'm going to say first impressions in this model. And the thing that really stuck out to me is the competence in terms of its overall results, where not only does it just give you what you asked for, but if applicable, like say you want a script or something like that, it gives you information on what dependencies you need, how to actually save the script, then how to run it. Then it gives you the script. And following that, it gives you suggested improvements to make it better. The responses I noticed were just very feature packed. So even I'll demonstrate it right now. Tell me the history of the iMac. And it's basically going to give us a really feature packed result here with tables and everything like that. This model seems to have a lot of cross domain knowledge or basically just a lot of knowledge about many different specific areas. And even this result right here is really feature packed and properly put together for especially a model of this size. This does seem like a very competent model and something very comparable to kind of the like structure of a model like GPT OSS 20B or something like that. So it's actually pretty cool. And I mean, the, the results are pretty aesthetically pleasing and the tables it makes are nice, but they're not too overwhelming like with GPT OSS. So, and then we have timelines and notable milestones. So really overall, that is going to conclude our testing. It does um, seemingly play role play up to a degree at least, which is good, I suppose. And it's just, you know, fast. So with that, that is going to conclude our first look and test of the NVIDIA Nemotron Nano 3 30B A3B model. It is pretty cool and I have good things to say about it. So that's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.